many of these habits do you think that I personally have? My guess is probably 9 out of 10. 69 out of 10, really. 69 out of 420 if we really try hard. 10 coding habits that make you a bad programmer. I want the number in the chat right now for how many of these I do. Reason number one, watching Twitch while working. Instantaneously shit code. Yeah, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Okay, I would buy that. Okay, so we got a, we got a, we got a lot in there. Okay, first off, uh, this by the way, this is the future of AI box art stuff. What does this even mean? What the hell does this image mean? It is a dinosaur missing to eat this guy, but apparently also still eating him with the other side of his mouth. And these guys doing the clasp of friendship. Okay, nobody knows what's happening in this photo. AI is the future. No, AI AI looks like something I recognize until you think about it, and then it's just crazy, okay? It's just crazy, okay? None of it makes any sense. None of it does. Like, why are these ropes kinked? Should they be straight? What kind of... Why is there a newspaper in the dinosaur's mouth? Okay, it just none of it makes any sense. And nobody is complaining about it. Um, does the guy on the left even have legs? No. He apparently has a carpet for a leg and little tendrils. Ten tendrils. Okay, anyways, let's do this. In the thrilling world of programming, every line of code weaves a story of it. Oh, my goodness. Is this DHH? Did I forget to turn off you. alerts? Hell yeah, brother. This is like I, I get I, every single video. People are like, is there a video in which he doesn't forget to turn off alerts? No. No, there's not. Um, anyways, in the thrilling world of every uh, programming, every line of code weaves a story of innovation and problem solving. Some of my code just weaves brainless ejaculation of thought and boilerplate. Okay, just want to throw that out there. However, even the most skilled coders can sometimes fall into a trap of de uh, detrimental habits. Hell yeah, let's get those habits. This article is your companion on the journey to becoming a more effective programmer. It shines light on a common pitfalls and provides practical strategies to overcome them. Whether you are a student, a researcher, or a saison coder, this playbook is your ticket to breaking free from bad habits and stepping into a full potential as a programmer. Let's dive in! Okay, so not going to lie to you. This sounds great. I want this. Okay, you know, my coding could get better. I always believe that my coding could get better, okay? I, you guys have seen it. Yeah, this has chat GPT energy. Strong chat GPT energy, for sure. Uh, segment one, the art of coding and the pitfalls of overconfidence. Okay, so I'm already feeling a strong disagree coming in, but let's keep on going. Programming is a fascinating journey, a dance between logic and create. Okay, this is entirely too much, like, this foreplay has gone on a long time, okay? I feel like we're still foreplaying. I still feel like we're in the shallow end. Are you asking people to dive in to a shallow pool? Let's get in, okay? Let's no more, no, no more beating around this bush, okay? Full shaft only. But dear reader, have you ever wondered if some of your habits are holding you back? Let's dive in to the first. Is, is this just going to be an article that kind of continuously keeps diving into the problem but never actually dives into the problem? The, the permanent edge, edge article? Uh, all right, here we go. That's, <laughs> let's see. Let's dive into the first two habits that might be sabotaging your coding prowess. Number one, master of all, ace of none. Is this chat Jippity's version of jack of all trades, master of none? By the way, that's actually a, uh, a play on words, master of all, uh, or, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. It actually used to be a different phrase in society for a long time, which was jack of all trades, master of one. And the joke was, you're a jack of all trades, a master of none. And then that became like a mantra. Don't be a jack of all trades. No, like in the past, they're saying be a jack of all trades, but master one, right? Like it's so much better of a phrase when you think of it that way. Imagine trying to learn every language spoken on earth. Daunting, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 6,000 or something like that. The same applies to programming languages. It's tempting to dip your toes into every language out there. Okay, this feels like a direct attack right now. Can we get, can we get, can we get a one on the board for Prime? Can we get a 1 out of 10? Can we get a 1 out of 10 right now? Okay. 1 out of 10. Uh, you might end up being a jack of all trades, a master of none. Concentrate on one language, become fluent, and then considering adding another to your repertoire. Keep in mind, depth often trumps breadth when it comes to coding. I mean, I agree. You know, I, I agree. Like, if all you could do is just the tip, you know, it's not going to be as good. 
It's just not. You know what I mean? I get. I mean, I get this. In the vast universe of programming, there are countless languages, each with its own unique syntax and charm. It's like being in a candy store, and you want to taste everything. It's like being a tourist who visits many countries but never stays long enough to understand the local culture. That's pretty much tourism. So focus on one language. Immerse it like that's why people like it. Because culture tends to suck everywhere. But when you go and visit something for a week, it's fantastic. <laughs> so focus on one language. Immerse yourself in it. Understand its nuances. Become a true master. Okay. Um... Uh, I'm kind of in a yeah, no on this one. And what I mean by that is that you should master one. But the process of mastering one and the process of ex exploration, they're not somehow mutually exclusive, right? To master a language, you need a language that has some level of depth that actually makes sense to master, right? So like JavaScript is not a language you can master because it is such a shallow language. I know people right now are just like, oh, well, what about all the tweeters about, oh, just when you think you mastered JavaScript, you realize you didn't. No, 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 no. JavaScript is an incredibly simple language. How people use it can be complex. That's different. That's learning programming concepts, okay? That's learning patterns. That's just having a gut feel about how to organize information and the processing of said information. That's a very different experience than mastering the language. If you aren't new to programming and you already have one to two languages underneath your belt, you could effectively master everything JavaScript has to have in like a week, a couple days. It is like, it is an incredibly simple language, which is what makes it so awesome. Right? Like that's why JavaScript is such a great initial language, is due to its simplicity. Right? And if anyone disagrees, just compare C to that one. Just tell me the four constructors. You won't even know you you won't you won't know shit by the time you're three days into C. Okay? You just won't. JavaScript, you start to know something. Now a lot more than that. I know. There's a lot more than that. Okay. There's actually quite a few, and it's very confusing, and I still don't understand it. Comp copy, empty a sign what is a constructor <laughs> likely wrong prototype inheritance is just not a thing anymore there's a, that, that's been largely covered over Proto, uh, pro, uh, uh, prototype inheritance was interesting totally terrible but interesting uh, all right number two the overworking overlord picture uh, picture this it's 2 a.m your eyes are bloodshot your fingers are flying over the keyboard and you've forgotten what sunlight looks like sound familiar yep i remember those days i wouldn't trade them for the world uh, overworking is a common pitfall for programmers. It's like eating too much chocolate. It feels good at the moment, but the aftermath is a productivity crash. So also again, let's fin let's let let's let him finish his thought. Okay, let's let him finish his thought. Hold on. Before you before you say I'm this one, hold on. Balance is key, my friend. Work smarter, not harder. In the world of coding, it's easy to lose track of time. The thrill of solving problems, the joy of seeing your code come to life can make you forget everything else. But beware, dear reader, for this path leads to the dark side, the realm of burnout. Overworking can make you feel like a hamster on a wheel, always running, but never reaching your destination. So take breaths, maintain a healthy work-life balance, and remember, your health is your true wealth. Okay, first off, your health is your true wealth. Always work out, always Always be active. Touch a little bit of grass. Get that sun rays on your face, baby. Do the healthy things. Eat right. Sleep well. But the rest of this is crap. Um, again, we've talked about burnout. I really, truly think burnout is not a problem of how much you work. It is what you work on. Okay? It is what The problem is, is that often you want some sort of value. You want some sort of satisfaction. You want some sort of meaning to come out of your job. And often it sucks. OK, um, this thing, this whole like work harder, not smarter thing in the beginning of my years, I worked my ass off. OK, to learn anything and to be really useful requires just a insane amount of work. And coding is incredibly hard. And there's something beautiful to that. Honestly, like, I don't think you should work forever at the same pace. I think you should ebb and flow, and in seasons of your life, you should work more, and in seasons of your life, you should work less, and in seasons, you should have lots of side projects, and in seasons, you should lean in to just your job, and you should sometimes just know what to do and when to do it, right? you got to be able to test your own self. But this idea of, like, of this never, you know, be careful, like, if you right now are losing track of your time and you having a thrill of solving problems, go f nuts. Love it for a little bit. 
You need to do that. There's nothing that is going to make you better at programming than the writing the joy of programming. And I do mean that. The joy of programming is one of the most important aspects of a good coder, of a great coder. There, you cannot, if you don't have any joy in whatever you do, you will not be good at it. You will not be great at it. You could, like, I mean, there will exist somebody that becomes great at something they hate. Okay, I get it. There's always an exception to the rule. But in general, you will not become great at something you hate. It's just a fact of life. You become great at the things you truly want to do. You spend your time doing the thing you truly want to do. All right? It's, it's, a, it's real talk. All right, segment number two, the lone wolf syndrome and the copycat. By the way, currently, I, I, based on his definitions, I, am, um, I, I got two for 10. I am two for 10, everybody. Two for 10. I'm hitting two for 10. Two for 10. Uh, segment two, the lone wolf syndrome and the copycat conundrum. Ooh, I love a good alliteration. Sometimes I, I just feel so illiterate sometimes. It's so good. Coding can be a solitary, solitary endeavor, but it doesn't have to be. Let's explore the dangers of going solo and the perils of plagiarism. You know, I do have a lot of Arch users here. They're pretty used to going solo. I'm just saying, as far as I can tell, you guys, just, just an observation. It's just an observation. I'm not trying to be mean here, okay? Got him. <laughs> Arch, by the way. All right, anyways, coding isn't a hermit's job. Sure, you can lock yourself in a room and crack complex problems, but remember, collaboration is at the heart of innovation. Reach out and share ideas and learn from your peers. After all, two heads are better than one, right? I think that phrase actually is meant as like an ironic phrase. Uh, often two heads are worse than one, but uh, they can also be better depending on the type of problem you're solving. But I do agree that you should all, like the, if you wish to get better, Seeing how other people look at a problem can be surprising, even if the person's worse than you. Like, real talk, even if the person is objectively worse than you at programming, they've been programming for four months, you've been programming for 10 years, seeing how a person thinks about a problem it can really change how you look at a problem. It's, it's actually, it's really great. So uh, never be afraid to look at someone else's how they do something, right? It's very, very good. Is, is Argyle just left fishing for ad revenue? You think so? I don't know. Let's find out. I do think that there's too much, like, in general, our article writer, I'm not trying to dog on you, but you should just definitely, like, reduce the amount of language. You're saying something in 50 words that you could say in, say, 25 words. Like, a little bit more to the point would be great. Uh, as a programmers, we often find ourselves lost in a world of code, oblivious to the world outside. It's, it's like you've already stated this. It's uh, easy to become a lone wolf, isolated from the pack. But remember, collaboration is the lifehood of innovation. Like, this is the same sentence as the one before. It brings fresh perspectives, new ideas. It can turn a good project into a great one. Reach out to your fellow coders, share ideas, and create a magic together. Um, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to create magic together unless if that's with the person you love. I That's, you know what I mean? Like... Is that an HR violation? I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, all right, copycat. The temptation to copy and paste someone else's code. It's like a siren's call, but beware, dear reader. It's a dangerous path. Plagiarism isn't just unethical. It can land you in legal hot water. Be inspired. Always create original... <laughs> Oh my goodness, there's entire cottage industries over copying it. Have you heard of Stack Overflow? <laughs> Do you know what Copilot is? Copilot is just glorified copy and paste. Oh my goodness, this this just makes me just feel so good. Uh, don't forget, imitation uh, might be the sincerest form of flattery, but in coding, it's cardinal sin. What? I've literally never seen a more incorrect take in my lifetime about coding. Like, I must be misunderstanding the point. I have to be. Like, there's there's some key piece of information that's devoid in my brain. But this is genuinely, as far as I can tell, completely incorrect. 
Uh, in the vast ocean of code available on the internet, it's tempting to take a shortcut, copy and paste someone else's code, but keep in mind, plagiarism is not just unethical, it's illegal. It's like ste stealing someone else's painting and passing it off as your own. Okay, Picasso. You wouldn't download a car, would you, kids? And just like that, segment three. Okay, so first off, I am now am officially convinced that this is a chat Jeopardy article. Like, completely convinced. But I'm pretty sure the search title was this, was give me seven things, give me ten things the Prime Engine does. And write it as an antagonistic article. Such that it's going to show up and he will react to it. I'm pretty sure that is like literally the chat jippity prompting, okay? Coding is a marathon, not a sprint. Let's discuss the pitfalls of rushing and hazards of letting emotions rule your code. Okay, so right now I am currently 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10. The dare, the deadline daredevil. Okay, the alliterations in this article... They're starting to bother me. Oh, we've all been there. The deadline is looming and the panic sets in. But rushing your work can lead to sloppy code and more bugs than, uh, than a summer picnic. Plan your time wisely. Communicate with your clients. And remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. The fast-paced world of coding deadlines are always looming. It's like a ticking time bomb, adding pressure and stress, but rushing your work can lead to mistakes, bugs, and subpar code. It's like building a house in a hurry without taking the time to lay a strong foundation. Plan your time wisely. Communicate with your clients. And remember, quality time only trumps quantity. Okay, there's very repetitive words in here, but I agree. I'm gonna call this Prime Reads AI. I actually agree with this statement. How many, let's see, how many literary devices get he, uh, get he stuff into one Medium article? Uh, it turns out all, all of them. Literally all of them. Um, I, I will say that in general, if you have to rush code out, we all know it's not as good, right? If you don't have time to write something twice, it's probably not, it's not that good. You know what I mean? The emotional coder. Now, this is crazy to me. I have no idea what's going to happen here. The coding, coding is a logical process, but we are human and emotions can sneak in. We, we are the human. Okay, this statement reads like a lizard person wrote this, okay? What are we at? What is this, Liz lizard human writing this? What is this? Don't worry, fellow humans. Emotions do sneak in from time to time. What? However, letting emotions dictate your coding decisions can lead to hasty, ill-thought-out solutions. Keep your heart out of your code and let your logical mind take the reins. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't even know what this means. Sometimes my heart is the coder. You know, sometimes my passions take over, okay? They get hot in the pants. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I just get in there and I'm just like coding my, my, my heart out. Those are my favorite days. Always remember passion is great, but when it comes to coding, cool-headed logic rules the day. No! As a result, we are emotional beings. Wait, as humans, we are, as, again, when you refer to yourself as a human, you're not a human. Uh, we love, we hate, we feel joy and sorrow. But when it comes to coding and emotions, can cloud our judgment, leading to hasty decisions and flawed code. It's like letting your heart navigate while driving. It might lead you astray. Keep your emotions in check. Let your logical, logical mind guide you. And remember, in the realm of coding, logic is key. This, this, this paragraph actually makes no sense, and I'm going to fully disagree. I think getting in there sometimes and just being and just like and just shitting out code at a high speed just to get something done and explore can be one of the most beneficial parts of your entire time and it can lead to faster results because now you know what you got to do and now you can come back and re-review it emotional damage segment four the procrastination pitfall and the premature surrender Procrastination and giving up too soon are two uh, are two more habits that can derail your coding journey. Let's delve into these habits and how to avoid them. Number one, the procrastination pitfall. Tomorrow, the sweet siren song of procrastination. We used to refer to this person as procrastitron, landing on the earth to destroy all productivity. You know, just a personal kind of experience with procrastitron. But in the fast-paced world of technology, tomorrow might be too late. Postponing projects can lead to the outdated solutions and frustrated clients. So, dear readers, seize the day. 
Carpe diem. And remember, the best time to start coding was yesterday. Actually, I fully agree with this one. Okay. Procrastination is terrible. Um, procrastination is almost is one of the, is one of the biggest reasons I see people go into burnout, go into despair, go into all these things. You know, I know this is a little bit more serious all of a sudden. Uh, but real talk is that you 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 let all these things build up. You're just like avoiding the real problem, and then now you have an intense amount of problems on on board, and it's just like it's so much harder to come back. Procrastination is truly terrible like i I, i'm definitely like uh organize what is most important do the most important thing kind of person coding can be tough oh the premature surrender (laughs) coding can be tough and some let's see and sometimes it's tempting to throw in the towel but remember every great coder has faced challenges and overcome them don't be afraid to ask help after all it isn't better to seek help or isn't it better to seek help and learn than to give up and regret coding (laughs) you want to live your life in regret or do you want to live your life with victories. The name is Tony Robigen. Uh Okay. We're just going to skip over that. Number, segment number five. Uh, so surrender later than earlier. Uh, delay surrender then. Got it. Yep. Right in assembly, fr- assembly framework. Got it. The familiar, let's see, the unfamiliar code conundrum and the journey to becoming a better programmer. Finally, let's discuss the dangers of unfamiliar code and how to become a better programmer. The, un- the unfamiliar code conundrum. Using code that you don't understand is like uh, trying to read a book in a language you don't speak. It's confusing, frustrating, and prone to errors. Take the time to understand the code before using it. Don't open up the standard library, though, okay? Sometimes you can know code based on the documentation, and sometimes you want to know what's happening below the code, below the API interface. Like, I get that. Uh, But real talk, go ahead. Take a little look-see at how a vector works in C++. C++. It'd be a fun time to go waste, right? You know? Below the sheets? Yeah. 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 Vectors. Yeah. C++ standard source is special. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's incredibly... C++. Yeah. It's my favorite. Uh, Okay, anyways... This idea that you need to understand code before you use it is a little crazy. Um, in fact, I would say that if you combined this piece of advice with this piece of advice, like you're going to be screwed, honestly. You're going to be screwed. You can't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that at all. Okay. It, 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 you don't want to do that. You, you need to understand things to a level in which makes sense to effectively use it. And often that comes down to understanding the API, the documentation, and sometimes you got to go into code. One of the biggest benefits of Node is that you can just jump right into the code, right? You jump right into the code, see what's going on, make some changes, and understand and kind of debug your way out of a problem, right? Like, that's really good. There's a really good thing. I mean, that's why also, you know, back in the day, for those that had to do C or C++, when you had to bring in vendor code, sometimes you got to go into their code and that's totally cool and it's, it allows you to kind of understand things at a better level but that's a rare that's like the non-common activity becoming a better programmer isn't about perfect uh being perfect it's about continuously learning and improving avoid these bad habits seek advice create original work <laughs> and most importantly keep your passion for coding alive just don't use your passion while programming because that's emotional coding um yeah i would say that this article is is um I'd say this article is a lot like a Dodge Stratus, okay? I don't know where I'm going with this literary liter, literary device, but I'm going to keep it there. Um, it's it's mostly crap. I do like at least half of these problems. Um, the thing is, is that working with people is good. You can get a lot more out quicker working with somebody than working by yourself. Good point. Procrastination is awful. It's going to ruin your life. Um, making the magic happen, always a good time. Uh, but really, be excited. If you're excited and you're coding and you have no responsibilities that you need to meet, enjoy it. Be okay with copying code. Copying is just fine. There is no such thing as downloading a car. Absolutely do it. All right? Um, absolutely, absolutely. If you want to overwork this year, this month, this day, go for it. Knock yourself out. But remember, the only time that this is truly like an opposite advice I will give is when you have others that are relying on you, right? Like if if my kids, I can't, I can only get so excited. I can only spend so much time programming. I have a beautiful wife. 
wonderful kids and I want to be in their life. I want to be a part of their life. I want to see them grow. I want to be able to spend time with them. And so I kind of have a choice there, which is always overwork or overwork when I need to. And so I, I'm very, very careful about how much, what is overwork and how much. And I think a good working amount personally for me, 60 hours a week of coding or thinking about coding or stupid meetings, that seems to be my kind of sweet spot where I can still get, I still have a lot of free time, but I love doing this. So there you go. Uh, master of all, uh, ace of none, go ahead. Be a jack of all for a while. Learn what you like. You don't have to master anything. Mastery takes years unless you're in a very shallow language, right? Like you can't rust, you can't master rust in a week. You can't, I mean, it's, it'd be hard to master rust in a year unless you're, if you're doing it full time, maybe, maybe, right? Jack them all, jack them all, baby. Uh, I don't know. I really disliked this article. I think it was, um, I think it had a lot of bad advice in here. Sorry, I'm not, I, I don't want to be a mean guy. But it it just really was not great advice. Don't don't follow most of this article. Okay. Hey, guess what? The name is the primogen. <laughs>